Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a good start to their weekend and I hope you've had a successful week. In this class, everyone, we are looking at IELTS Speaking Band 9. This is Speaking Part 1, and this Speaking Part 1, we'll be talking about uh, flowers. This was actually a topic in one of the uh, previous exams a few months back. Uh, welcome, Cass. Hi, Nuthun. Welcome, Kyber. Welcome to our members. And welcome Marjona, Max Mudov. Good to see many of our regular students in the class as well. And of course, welcome to our chat moderator, uh, Carolina. I hope everybody is having a superb time and uh, you're all doing well and staying healthy. Uh, students, in this class, uh, we are uh, going to be taking some uh, materials as well as using our website, uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, uh, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. I'll show you what these websites look like, and we're using this website, aehelp.com, today uh, for our speaking. We will do a chat uh, interface uh, in a bit here and uh, this is the red button that you need to click to join our premium IELTS package it's a one-time payment for lifetime access so it's well worth it once you do that uh, you'll have a my student account in your my student account you'll have practice exams you'll have a fully interactive course um, you'll have a workbook, study plans, six original practice exams. You're going to have lots of audio CDs. And today we're going to use this uh, student partner speaking to practice our uh, speaking today. So just giving you a heads up on that. Uh, General IELTS, green background, click this red button, join the premium package. We are an official British Council test registration center and certified agents so you are in great hands with us uh, to get our apps uh, simply go to your app store get academic IELTS help and general IELTS help uh, link the apps to your web account so if you already have a, an account on our website in the app you can click on the more or tap the more and then you'll um, see this uh, option link accounts and then you can link the account there okay Instagram IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help lots of uh, great little videos vocabulary challenges so follow us on Instagram um, questions send me an email Adrian at AE help dot com uh, want our exam books only? Go to Amazon, get our exams. You can get the paperback book delivered to your house. Search for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS. Uh, students, uh, so part one today, again, focusing on flowers. Okay, everybody is in the chat and everybody will have a chance to connect with me. Uh, tomorrow, uh, speaking part two and speaking part three. So lots of uh, lots of speaking practice ahead of us all right uh, here we go everyone so IELTS speaking let's get right into it now again I always remind everybody don't just listen to me but speak and repeat so this is a speaking class so you want to speak and repeat, copy my intonation, copy my pronunciation as best as you can. All right. So uh, let's get into it. You're in your IELTS speaking and um, you get called into uh, your interview. You've registered you're calm you're confident you've been using english speaking english only on the day of the exam you've practiced with some other candidates you said hey you're here for the exam and they said yes i am and then you're like 
okay, so uh, you want to practice with me for like five, ten minutes? And then they're like, sure, that's a great idea. Do you have some questions? I sure do. I printed some questions off just before the exam for this very moment. I'm ready. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, let's do it. And then you practice, okay? So do that. <laughs> um, and uh, not by yourself with someone okay at the exam um, and then you go into your exam eventually and your examiner will greet and meet you or meet and greet you um, and then you're off to the races okay Farouk welcome thank you um, all right, uh, so the examiner always starts the same way. They will say, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. This is candidate number 9571. We are currently conducting this exam in Madrid and the time is 13 o'clock. Now we shall begin. May I see your identification, please? They will ask you for the same identification that you showed uh, during the um, uh, registration um, and when you checked in for your exam and you need to give a nice uh, full sentence answer for this. So may I see your identification? Uh, Kyber says, yes, gladly. Here's my passport with my credentials. I use this for registration online. Please have a look. That's a fantastic answer. Kyber, it's nice and fluent. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to take it right out of the chat, Kyber. You've been doing a really great job. You're paying attention. And uh, yeah, that works just fine. Okay, so that will get you a good start there you go so this is kyber's answer and it works it's nice and fluent cass says gladly here's my passport that i used to register last month uh you may please have a look um let's correct that a little bit cass but it's almost perfect i like how it's quite different so this is what cass is saying you should say in the chat um, and it's almost there, so almost, just a little adjustment. Um, you definitely don't want to make uh, mistakes um, in the beginning. You want to sound perfect for these first few questions, okay? So gladly, here's my passport that I used to register last month. Uh, you may please have a look is kind of unnatural so let's take out the you may okay so let's take let's take that out okay uh, simply just write please have a look okay you may please have a look a bit strange all right so both of these are okay repeat after me nice and fluent may i see your identification please Yes, gladly. Here's my passport with my credentials. I use this for registration online. Please have a look. Gladly. Here's my passport that I used to register last month. Uh, please have a look. Nice, fluent answers, okay? Um, again, students, remember, uh, do not make mistakes in the beginning, all right? This just sounds bad. So uh, do not make mistakes at the start be very clear and accurate and another interesting one um so notice how cast is using a contraction here okay um with uh, here's uh, instead of the here is um here's an interesting tip and i haven't really emphasized this um, but at the start let's say um for the first like four questions Um, do not use contractions, but enunciate each word clearly. Okay, so um, instead of saying don't, uh, use uh, do not. Okay, do not. Um, instead of um, here's. Uh, use here is 
why why do you think I say that? So why would I why would I give you that um, that piece of advice right now? So why am I telling you not to use uh, contractions? I'm just gonna close the door here while you give me the answer. So <clears throat> a contraction, Anish, is when you take two words like do not and you push them together like don't, okay? Uh, task two writing, by the way, task one writing, um, don't use contractions either. Uh, you can use contractions in general writing task one. Okay, uh, Baljeet says, I am confused <laughs> instead of I'm confused, right? Um, Marjona says to be clearer, okay? Yeah, Anir Ban says to make the speech clearer. Yeah, um, so uh, these are the examples of contraction, students. It's when you push two words together, okay? So yeah, you want to be absolutely clear, okay? You want to be 100% clear, okay? Because uh, you want to be 100% clear, but not only that, and and you want to sound confident and strong okay using contractions you should know this weakens your emphasis okay so when you're giving a professional presentation um, for example you do not use contractions okay so in good communication and you will learn this in business classes as well that you do not use contractions in professional communication okay so keep in mind that the rule in professional and academic communication is to avoid contractions in most cases okay yeah I know a lot of people don't know about this cast but when you when you really get into it um, then you learn this so uh, and that makes sense right like if I say don't do that it doesn't sound as strong as saying like do not do that right just think about that one example don't do that versus do not do that right the do not do that when we enunciate each word clearly it carries more strength more emphasis okay so here is my passport that i used for registration last month carries more emphasis than just simply saying here's my passport that i used last month okay everybody clear on that good got it okay so remember that contractions it does matter what you're doing with contractions okay now i said the first four or five questions once you have done that so once you have avoided contractions for the first four or five questions then you can start using them in your speaking because it's good to show the examiner that you do know how to use contractions so now you've learned to do this you've been uh, informed so you can do it later on okay all right, I can see a lot of thumbs up and noted. All right, so control your contractions. Okay, so next question. All right, one more time. Uh, next question, uh, what is your full name? Okay, so after the uh, question, uh, may I see your identification? The next question is, what is your uh, full name? Okay. And uh, here we have some good answers, okay? Let me just take some out. Okay, so here is uh, um, Gurpreet. Okay, let's analyze what Gurpreet has said here. So, uh, Gurpreet says, my given name is Gurpreet and my family name is Singh. Please address me by my given name, Gurpreet, for short. Gurpreet is not short for Gurpreet, okay? Um, we don't say that. Gurpreet isn't short for your full name. It's, it should be uh, short. Um, so, Gurpreet, if you have a short form of your name, like um, uh, Preet, 
for example, or ger, I don't know if there would be a short form for that, then that would be a short, okay? Um, please address me by my given name, Gurpreet is okay, but Gurpreet is not uh, short for Gurpreet, okay? Uh, students, when you say for short, okay, the only time you should use it is when you have a short version of your uh, full name, like Sam is short for Samuel or Samantha if you're a woman. Okay, um, or Tom is short for uh, Thomas, okay, or uh, for example, oftentimes Mo is short for Mohammed, okay, so those are short because you can see it's a short form, okay, I've seen this mistake too often these days where uh, students give their name and it's still the same name. It's not a short form of their name and it's awkward. It's a mistake. Everybody clear on that now? Okay. Yeah. So Raman Preet Kaur says, my first name is Raman Preet and my given name is Kaur. For short, please refer to me as Raman. Yeah, that's correct. So Raman Preet, that's good. If you want me to call you Raman instead of Raman Preet, that is correct, okay? All right, good, well done. Lots of thumbs up, super, okay? So don't make a mistake. Again, don't make mistakes in the beginning, all right? Don't make mistakes in the beginning. Okay, everyone, so uh, let's uh, just get right into it. I mean, you know, we're into this week of live streaming. Uh, I think we can get right into some uh, verbal communication here. So I'm going to call some of you, some of our viewers, and we're going to do these questions mano a mano. Um, so one-on-one, uh, -on -one. that was a bit of Spanish, I think. And then I'll give feedback and learn from each other, okay? So here we go, everybody. Um, we've got lots of questions, as you can see, and uh, you can volunteer to practice some speaking with me and I will give you feedback. So we'll do one question per volunteer. To volunteer, follow these steps. Um, Alts Candidate, I don't know if you can call your friend Muham. I'm not sure if that's short for Muhammad. I know that Mo is, you'll have to ask your friend. Um, all right, so to volunteer everyone, follow these steps. Go to aehelp.com on the website. Uh, register a free or a paid account. Please don't click on the messenger button. That's just for administrative questions, okay? Uh, log into your My Student account. So there's a couple of steps that you need to take here. And then click on Student Partner Speaking. Um, and then make sure to enable your microphone in your browser. I'm going to um, show you these steps in just a second. And then in the chat, um, click on the blue envelope and message me. I want to volunteer. Okay, so those are the steps. Let me show you, all right? So first you go to the website, aehelp.com. The website will initially look like this, okay? You'll see a video play, you can pause that. And then you can join the premium package um, by clicking that big red button, I highly recommend it. Um, and you can try it for free by clicking that green button. Okay, so uh, you click the um, one of those buttons and then you get a My Student account. That's at the top there, like way up there, right? The, where you have the login. And then um, My Student account, you're logged in. Uh, then you have this student partner speaking. Okay, on your mobile, it'll look a little bit different. Okay. And so we click on that. I accept start speaking, okay? And then um, you get into the chat interface of, uh, the, um, of the website, okay? Uh, you can use this on mobile, but definitely students, desktop is a bit easier. Um, we haven't quite developed it fully yet for mobile. Uh, it's a lot of development to have chat interface on mobile, okay? So um, we are working on it though, that is coming. 
Okay. Um, all right. So then we have our volunteers here. We have San, uh, Chandra, sorry, Chandra, uh, one of our members, and we have Rahul, and we have uh, Payal. Uh, Muhammad Ayub um, is in here as well. Nutan, uh, Shalini. Okay. We've got lots of volunteers in here, and I can see that many of you are messaging me. Um, all right, uh, I'm gonna start from the bottom today. So let's see if Marjona is available. So here's Marjona. Uh, Marjona says, hi, sir. Oh, you just messaged me. I would like to volunteer. Are you ready? I bet you are, because I just saw your message come through. All right, Marjona. If you're there and you're ready, let me know. Oh, and again, students, um, when you first log into the website, it will ask you when you're first using this to enable your microphone and your speaker. So use that, okay? Hi, Marjona, how are you? I'm good, thanks for asking. What about you? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I had a good solid eight hours of sleep, so I'm full of energy. Glad to hear. All right. Okay, uh, Marjona, so you're ready for some uh, speaking part one questions? Yeah, of course. Awesome, okay. So uh, here we go. These are still kind of the icebreaker questions. So after the examiner asks you for your passport and your name, um, they're going to ask you one or two more questions just to kind of try to get to know you a little bit better. So I'm going to start from the top um, and we'll go through the first two questions nice and quick and then we'll get to a fresh question. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so Always welcome good. to the speaking portion of the exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. May I see your identification, please? Yes, of course. Here is my ID, which I use uh, for register uh, to regis register for this test. Uh, please have a look. And what is your full name? My given name is Marjona, and my surname is Karimva. But please call me by my first name, Marjona. It's more comfortable for me. Okay, Marjona. For part one, I will ask you a couple of more questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Okay. Where do you live? I live in Tashkent city, which is uh, uh, one of the uh, largest cities in Uzbekistan and it's the uh, capital city of Uzbekistan. Okay. Let me give you some feedback. Yeah. All right. So not bad. Um, it's about a band six five going towards a seven. You have good fluency. You've made a couple of slight mm -hmm. awkward mistakes. Um, you don't want to make mistakes in the beginning, Marjona. Mar the beginning has to be a hundred percent. Like a lot of people think, oh, they're, but they're not marking me on these questions technically, but of course they're marking you. They're marking you from the first moment that you start speaking, okay? So they're starting to think about how you use your words, how comfortable you are, how confident you are. And you know, you're a bit nervous, I can hear that, and that's okay, that's why it's good to do this. Um, so I'm just going to look at this question. Uh, so you said, I live in Tashkent city, which is one of the largest. It's okay to say city, um, but when you come from a very well-known city, like the capital of Uzbekistan, you, you, we usually don't actually add the word city. And you have a bit of repetition in this answer as well. So you say it's one of the largest cities in Uzbekistan. It is the capital city of Uzbekistan. So you literally said city three times. City, city, city and Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan twice, right? So your yeah, goal, Marjona, is reduce repetition, increase detail. Okay. Okay, so re reduce repetition, increase detail. So I live in Tashkent, which mm. is, which is, and here, if you're giving two pieces, like large and capital, I would use a correlative conjunction. So I live in Tas uh, Tashkent, which is not only 
uh, one of the largest cities in Uzbekistan. It is also uh, the capital. And you don't need to repeat any of that because we already know you've said that, okay? And okay. then maybe give a little bit more detail. Like I live in a two bedroom flat with my parents. I don't know if you do, but um, just as an example. Okay, uh, so not just the city in your country, but also your residence, like if you live in a house or if you live in an apartment, because you're picking up fluency and vocabulary. And even if the examiner is not marking you, it's helping you to be better for the next questions, okay? Okay, got it. Okay, all right, so Marjona, here we go. I'm going to say this one more time with the answer and then just repeat after me. If you want, you can change that last sentence to your actual place that you live in, okay? So okay. here we go. Um, where do you live? I live in Tashkent, which is not only one of the largest cities in Uzbekistan, it is also the capital. I live in a two bedroom flat with my parents. Where do you live? I live in Tashkent, which is uh, not only one of the largest cities in Uzbekistan, it's also the capital. I live in a two bedroom flat with my parents and my brother. Okay, great. That was much better. All right. So that's the kind of detail, fluency and non repetition, right? So no repetition, okay, that you need to master, but you're on the right track. Okay, Marjona, thank you so much for being the first volunteer today and uh, keep it up. You have good English. Just practice thank you. it. Okay, you're welcome. Keep it up. Bye, Marjona. Okay, thank you for lessons. You're very welcome. Goodbye. All right. Goodbye. So that's Marjona. Um, everybody give her an applause. She's doing a great job being the first one there. Um, okay. So let's keep this going. We'll take some more volunteers. I'm just going to uh, jump around here. Here's Suraj. Um, let me see if I can reach out to Suraj. I'm going to be quick in choosing. So are you ready? Siraj. Let's see if we can catch Siraj. So we've had Uzbekistan. I think we're going further east. If you're looking at directions from where I am. All right. Siraj is ready. Hi, Siraj. I hear, <clears throat> excuse me, I hear that you picked up, but uh, I can't hear your voice. Can you make sure that your microphone is enabled? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. There we go. Hi, Siraj. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Thanks. How are you? Good. Thank you for asking. That's nice. Yeah, it's good to ask back. Um, uh, Surat, and you can do that in the exam, by the way. I, sometimes students ask me that, like if the examiner asks me, how are you? Is it okay if I ask them, how are you back? Um, yeah, absolutely. That's good, good conversation. So they don't always ask, but sometimes I've heard students say, oh, my examiner asked me how I'm feeling. And then I was like, should I ask them? Should I not? Um, yeah, you should. Um, okay, Siraj, where are you calling from? So where are you right now? Are you still there, Siraj? I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe an unstable internet, a ghost in the machine. All right, Siraj, uh, check your microphone or maybe check your internet connection. That's probably why I can't hear you. Um, and then uh, try again in a little bit and I'll keep an eye out for you, okay? Right, but I absolutely cannot hear you right now, so we'll come back later. Yeah, nothing. Okay, all right. Uh, let me try someone else here. Let's try Nuthan. So, Nuthan is one of our members. Um, are you ready? Yeah, make sure it's a good idea to have a stable internet LAN if possible when you're doing this kind of interaction. Um, Wi-Fi is okay. I would avoid data if possible. Okay, all right. Hello, sir. Hi, Nuthan. How are you? 
I'm very good. So how are you? I am doing fantastic. Uh, Nutan, where are you? Are you in India, if I'm not mistaken? Yes, sir. I'm from India, Bangalore. Bangalore. That's right. Yes. Yeah. I try to remember. I try. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, Nutan. Um, so uh, we'll get into a speaking part one question here. Give me a nice full sentence answer. Remember to give an answer, explanation, example whenever possible, okay? Sure, sir. I would do that. All right. So after the introductory questions, um, the examiner should introduce the topic of uh, part one. And in this case, the examiner will say, let's talk about flowers. How often do you buy flowers? Yes, uh, well, I would say that uh, may not be too often I buy a flower, but it would be an occasion uh, uh, like during marriages we buy flowers, maybe uh, two, time, two kinds of flowers we buy to decorate our house and Okay, I didn't catch the and uh, yes, sorry, I just got cautious. Sorry. So last, uh, maybe I can say last week uh, at my brother's marriage. So we we bought a bunch of flowers to decorate our house and even a car to decorate. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't know. So I think you got uh, distracted there maybe a little bit. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, yeah, in the aisles, that won't happen as easily because there will be no mobile phones. There'll be no other people. Nobody will yes. be opening a door. It sounds like somebody's opening a door. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> but that's okay. Um, all right. So less distractions. Definitely, though, you know, in the aisles, in the speaking interview, stay focused. So yes, um, it, it, you can kind of let your brain wander, but you want to really focus on the examiner. So um, the answer would get you about a band five. Um, and the reason being is because it's not really fluent, it's not really coherent. So you're not speaking smoothly and you're not speaking clearly. Yeah. I think the first mistake, Nuthan, is that you're overcomplicating, you're overthinking, okay? And so yeah. this is a, um, advice that goes out to everybody. Do not overthink and overcomplicate uh, answers, especially for part one, okay? Okay. So you want to keep it way simpler. Um, this question is about you. How often do you buy flowers? And um, you start off that way. You say, well, I would say that not too often I buy flowers. It was grammatically a bit awkward, but I still understood what you're saying. And then you said by occasion, like during marriage. And then you started to change to we. Did you notice that you changed the yes. you to a we? You said yes, we buy flowers for marriage. Um, we buy two kinds of flowers. Who are we? Do you mean like people in India or people in your culture or in your religion or in your family I don't know who you mean when you say we right so um, you have to keep it simple I me my okay so here we go um, I'm going to change your answer to a simpler answer that will get you a higher band score okay okay so and I will you know stay with the same idea so I rarely buy flowers uh, maybe just uh, once or twice each year uh, for wedding celebrations. Um, I uh, bought some roses last year uh, for my brother's wedding. Okay. So much yes. simpler, you have the answer, you have the explanation, you have uh, the word rarely, and then you have the word once or twice, or you have the words once or twice, okay? So you want to keep the answer simple like that, not just qualitative, but quantitative, so numbers, okay? How often? Once, twice, 10 times, five times, okay? Um, here we go. I'm going to read the question and the answer. Repeat after me. So, how often do you buy flowers? 
I really, I really buy but... flowers. Maybe just <laughs> once or twice each year for wedding celebrations. I bought some roses last year for my brother's wedding. How often do you buy flowers? I really buy, buy flowers, maybe just once or twice a year for wedding celebration. I bought some roses last year for my brother's wedding. Much better, much clearer, much more fluent. So that was great. And uh, when you have a bit of time, you want to get, get a little bit of oil or a little bit of grease and you want to put it on those door hinges. Okay, yeah. I can hear the door in the background, they're creaking. So oil up that door a little bit and then it won't okay. creak so much. It's just some friendly advice to help <laughs> sure. okay. oh, No, it's my, uh, it's, it's my chair. I mean, oh, it's, it's your chair. Okay, then you yeah. gotta oil up that chair a little bit so it's less creaky. Sure. Right. Sure, so. Okay, sure. Nutan. Thank you so much for volunteering. Keep it up. And remember, don't overcomplicate. Okay, simple answers get you high band scores. Okay. Sure, sir. I will mark that. Thank you so much for that advice. All right. Thank Keep you. it up. Thank Bye, Nutan. Sure. Goodbye, sir. All right. So that was uh, Nutan. Um, give Nutan an applause there. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay, um, so uh, let's keep going here. Um, we've got lots and lots of volunteers, so I'm just gonna keep picking out students. Let's see if, uh, oh, I think, oh, let's see, Sai, maybe let's try Sai. Okay, so, um, Sai says, I would like to volunteer. I have an exam on Tuesday. Okay, well, let's give Sai a chance. All right, Sai, are you ready? Okay, so remember students, don't overcomplicate answers in part one. Part one's about you, so make sure your nouns are about you. I, me, my, myself, okay? Focus on yourself in uh, part one, especially when you hear the word you in the question. Right, it's a very important piece of advice. Okay, Sai, here we go. Hi, Sai. Hi, Adrian. How are you? I am doing fantastic, and uh, you have an exam coming up on Tuesday. Yes. Where Where are you taking the exam? Well, I mean, I'm from India and Hyderabad, so mm -hmm. I have my speaking exam on Tuesday and remaining exams on Thursday. I see. May I ask why are you taking the IELTS exam? So I want to pursue my dream in uh, Masters in USA. Masters in USA, um, in what field? In Computer Science. In Computer Science. All yes. right. MIT? Uh, <laughs> I would be happy if I get MIT. but. It's a long shot. I'll try for MIT. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Dream big, right? Why not? Dream big. Um, and yes. nice use of the phrase long shot. Okay. Um, I don't know if our viewers caught that, but Sai used the word, it's a long shot. When we say it's a long shot, it means it's a difficult, um, so it's a low chance or it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult competition. It's a long shot. It's difficult to achieve. So nice use of that. It's already an indication that you're speaking well. Like I say, the examiner catches everything that you're saying, okay? All right, um, so Sai, I'm going to ask you a question here for part sure. one, and just give me a nice full sentence answer. Be yourself, okay? Uh, here we go. So let's talk about flowers. Um, what is your favorite flower? Well, I like uh, roses a lot, basically because of their beautiful smell and nature. I prefer to purchase roses on every occasion, especially to give it to my girlfriend or to my mother on occasions like a wedding or birthdays. Nice fluency. Okay, I couldn't even catch all of that. So I like roses a lot because of their beautiful smell and nature. Um, I buy roses uh, a lot. And I think you said something like especially uh, for uh, my girlfriend and my mother, something like that. Yes. My mother right. on special occasions. Um, like weddings and birthdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very nice fluency. Yeah. 
okay? And then I'm not sure if I caught an example, but if you can, especially with your fluency, you can easily sneak an example in there. Like I bought a dozen roses, because I bet you have this vocabulary, a dozen uh, red roses uh, for uh, the upcoming Valentine's Day <laughs> uh, for my girlfriend. Sure. Right? Why not? Yes, okay. I'll try to incorporate that. Yeah, yeah. Um, in your pronunciation, you have a beautiful fluency. In your fluency, uh, or sorry, in your pronunciation, try not to make that uh, popping sound at the end. I know a lot of people in India do it when they speak English. The the right that popping sound. Uh, yeah. It's it's okay. I mean, I don't think you'll lose marks for that, but it's a slightly awkward sound for the native English uh, ear. Okay. Slightly. Sure, that's uh, usually because I'm a bit tensed, so that's the reason. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of, yeah, it's, a, it's like a nervous tick kind of uh, response. I sure. get that, I get that. But it is emphasis, it does carry emphasis. Anyhow, without being, I know, sometimes I'm really picky, right? Um, so, okay, uh, nice answer, good fluency, high band score, easily a band eight, okay? So I think that you have very solid English. I can tell that you use English a lot and you've used yes. English. Most of yes, I'm currently okay. working in Amazon, so I have a lot of my friends in US, so I speak them speak to them on a daily basis. And I can hear that. That's that's what happens <laughs> when you use English every day. You get to that level of fluency. Excellent. So uh, I like how you didn't hesitate. Like, I'm not sure if roses are your favorite, but you just picked it and you went with it, right? Some of us don't know a lot about flowers and some people be like, well, I don't even know what kind of flower I you know, like. Um, but you just went with a common flower, roses, tulips, right, daisies. So it's just something that is easy to talk about. I like roses a lot because of their beautiful smell and nature. I wasn't really clear what you meant by that word nature. What do you mean by uh, that? Well, it's because it's quite pleasant to look at. It's uh, quite refreshing because I have my own garden and there are a couple of roses. Okay. When I wake up in the morning and look at them, I feel quite refreshed. So I tend to say it that way. Uh, yeah, I would say I'm... beautiful appearance instead of okay. nature. I think that would be a little bit clearer in that case. So, okay, I'm going to um, read this uh, one more time and then just repeat after me, okay? So what is your favorite flower? I like roses a lot because of their beautiful smell and appearance. I buy roses a lot, especially for my girlfriend and my mother on special occasions like weddings and birthdays. Um, I bought a dozen red roses uh, for the upcoming Valentine's Day for my girlfriend. Um, what is your favorite flower? I like roses a lot because of their beautiful smell and appearance. I buy roses a lot, especially for my girlfriend and my mother on special occasions like weddings and birthdays. I bought a dozen red roses for the upcoming Valentine's Day for my girlfriend. Okay, that's very good. I mean, there's a couple oddities, um, but it's funny, like these, you won't really lose marks for. We usually don't say beautiful smell, we'll say pleasant smell and beautiful yes. appearance, but in everyday conversation you will sometimes hear people say something like beautiful smell so it's not you wouldn't lose marks for that um, also you said on special occasions like weddings like whose wedding your mother's wedding and your girlfriend's wedding that means your wedding and your parents yeah. wedding, right so it's a bit <laughs> but it, but it's still okay it's that that kind of language is still okay they're not going to be like well they'll just be like okay it's kind of different but it's fine um, so good. Uh, I hope you get into MIT. I will keep my fingers crossed. Um, I'm sure you're going to do uh, fantastic on your IELTS. And uh, I don't think your IELTS score will be a problem for MIT. So if you've got some good grades and uh, good experience, you never know, right? Dream big. Yes, Adrian. Yes, thank you so much. It means a lot. <laughs> All right. And I, uh, I'm also fingers crossed for MIT. So let's hope for the better <laughs> right. results. Okay, Sai. Uh, have an awesome rest of your weekend and stay tuned. Keep learning. Thank you so much, Adrian. Your okay. videos helped me a lot. <laughs> You're very welcome. Bye, Sai. Bye. Okay, everybody, give Sai a thumbs up and keep your fingers crossed that Sai makes it into MIT because um, that would just be fantastic, right? Okay, everyone, uh, here we go. Let me find someone else um, to uh, volunteer. All right. Okay, um, let's see, I'm trying to see if I can maybe catch someone from a different 
locality as well. Just kind of scanning through. Uh, don't give up, by the way. I saw a couple of people volunteering that have since disappeared, but uh, don't don't give up. Don't give up. Okay. All right. Um, here's Kevin. Let's try Kevin. I wonder where Kevin's at. Okay. So can I be your pick today? Kevin, yes, I just did. Are you ready? I think we had Kelvin last time. And uh, let's do Kevin then today. Yep, okay, Kevin's ready. Hi, Kevin. Hello? Hello. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Oh, uh, I'm doing fantastically well. Thank you for asking. Um, it's great to be back on board once again. <laughs> awesome, Kevin. Uh, Kevin, can you remind me where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam. Awesome. It's a big city. What is the population of uh, Hanoi? I think Hanoi is populated by a million-ish people. I I don't know, so you can just go and fact check it. <laughs> just ask Mother Google, right? <laughs> yeah. It's always a safe safe uh, answer. Yeah, and, and you know, with cities, it's tricky because you always have like kind of the core of the city and then you have the greater area of the city, which is often many more people. But, uh, but saying 8 million-ish, I like that natural use of the I-S-H, 8 million-ish. That was good English, okay? So that's great. All right, Kevin. So I will ask you... Um, a question, give me a nice full sentence answer, okay? Absolutely. All right. Um, do you have flowers in your home? Why or why not? Um, I don't have, I don't place flowers in my house um, for, I would say, two reasons. Uh, number one, for flowers in Vietnam, I mean, given the hot and humid uh, climate of the country, uh, flowers wither quite quickly. Also, um, as as for my case only, my house is uh, poorly ventilated, so and and it doesn't let in a lot of uh, natural light. So, uh, I mean, putting in a bouquet or a, a flower vase would uh, I would assume it, it it looks it would look pretty dreadful rather than um, uh, adding a visual interest or so. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, quite the answer. Um, quite the answer. Beautiful vocabulary, by the way, right away. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, great vocabulary. A little bit sporadic. Okay. So you're. Uh, it's a little bit kind of jumpy, but you're doing a good job of incorporating, of piecing it together. Um, I do recommend speaking more smoothly. Okay. So... Uh, you have a lot of elements that kind of just get stuck together. And even though it's pretty good English, like there's not a lot of mistakes in what you're doing, especially with your intonation, it does become challenging for the listener to really have clarity at the end of what you've said. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you said, uh, I don't have, and then you realize, oh, I want to paraphrase that. So instead of saying don't have, you, you paraphrase and you said, I don't place flowers in my home. Um, I don't recommend doing that. So if you already started with, I don't have flowers in my home, just finish with that. You can paraphrase later. So later on you can say, and that's the reason I don't place flowers around my home. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? So you don't have to kind of stop yourself and then go, okay, I'm going to paraphrase and then paraphrase. But instead, just finish the sentence the way you started and then use that paraphrasing at the end of what you're saying. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So um, you said, uh, I don't have, I don't place flowers in my home. I would say that for two reasons. Careful when you do that because now I'm expecting you to give me two clear reasons. I think it's just better to give the two reasons instead of saying that you're going to give me two reasons because sometimes what happens with people is that they kind of get stuck clarifying what each of those two reasons specifically are. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Uh, of course, it, it's... Uh... For me, it, it sounds a little bit uh, 
too uh, contrived. It's it's not that it's most natural. It, exactly, exactly. Um, and that and um, the examiners don't like to hear contrived answers. Like you know when uh, sometimes candidates will say, "Well, there are a lot of reasons that I like flowers, but the reason that I love flowers the most is it sounds like you said contrived." Uh, I'm not sure if our viewers know this word contrived, but contrived means like artificially made up. Or artificially put together okay and you want to avoid that kind of language um, and then you said uh, in Vietnam uh, the weather is hot and humid so flowers wither quite quickly that was beautiful English so really nice uh, explanation of the climate that's in the homes and then good use of the word wither um, so flowers wither and wilt Okay, these are very good uh, verbs um, that get you those high lexical resource scores. So when a flower goes like this, students, when it goes and kind of flops over, starts dying, it's withering or wilting. Okay, those are the two words for that, wither or wilt. So thank you for sharing those words. Okay, um, so I think your answer was great. I, I would just put it together a little bit smoother, okay? So I would do it like this. I uh, you started this way, so let's keep it this way. I don't have flowers around my home because the um, climate in uh, Hanoi, uh, where I live, is uh, hot and humid. Uh, so cut flowers uh, wilt uh, very quickly. Uh, also, they tend to um, attract insects, okay? Um, I um, had a succulent uh, plant um, last year and um, there were always flies in my home. Uh, so I got rid of it, okay? Um, and, and then just stop. So I changed it a little bit, but just kind of, you know, giving you that uh, clarity. And then here, if I want to paraphrase, I can do that. So I don't place uh, plants or flowers around my home anymore, okay? All right, um, so um, Kevin, are you still there? All right, so I'm going to um, read this and then uh, just copy after me. So feel that smoothness in your answer, okay? All right, um, so do you have flowers in your home? Why or why not? I don't have flowers around my home because the climate in Hanoi where I live is hot and humid. So cut flowers wilt very quickly. Also, they tend to attract insects. I had a succulent plant last year and there were always flies in my home, so I got rid of it. Now I don't place plants or flowers around my home anymore. Okay, uh, do you have uh, flowers uh, in your home? Why or why not? No, I don't place flowers around my house because given the hot and humid climate in uh, Hanoi where I live, uh, flowers withered quite quickly. Also, they attract insects like bees. Um, I had a uh, succulent plant in my house and yeah um, I, I, I did have a hard time uh, trying to uh, get all the bees out of my house the other day I, I think I, I lost uh, I didn't catch you the the final sentence so sorry that's okay you've done a great job so that's that that's why the repetition I'm pushing you right I, I, I have a good feeling of your level so that's why I'm pushing you uh, now I don't place plants or flowers around my home anymore uh, now I don't place plants and flowers around my house anymore. Place. Yeah, perfect. So that's where I was just doing that paraphrasing that you started with at the beginning, right? Okay, Calvin, good. So good English. You've got a lot of great vocabulary. Your focus must be on putting it together smoothly. So I recommend recording yourself, recording your speaking. And whenever you find yourself kind of jigsaw puzzling your ideas together, Think about, okay, how can I say this in a more smooth or in a smoother, more connected way? And then try it again and train your brain and your speaking to be that 
uh, or to have that smoothness, okay? Absolutely, thank you so much for your feedback. Okay, you're very, very welcome. Um, that was Kevin, uh, give Kevin an applause. That was really awesome, Kevin, and have a great rest of your night in Hanoi. You too, sir, bye. Okay, bye. All right, so that was Kevin, all right, let's see. Let's see what's going on. I hope everybody's paying attention in the chat. I see some students uh, drifting off in the chat into some other dialogue there. And um, the goal here, students, is stay focused, right? So when you're practicing your speaking, really stay focused. I'm going to take another volunteer here. Um, don't think that because I'm giving certain advice to uh, Kevin or Sai uh, or someone else that it doesn't pertain to you. A lot of this advice is relatable to many, many people and many IELTS candidates. A lot of us make similar kinds of mistakes in our speaking. So uh, stay focused, okay? All right. Um, so let's take another uh, volunteer. Uh, let's see if Juman, I've always loved that name. Juman, such a great name. Uh, let's see if Juman is uh, available here with us. Okay, Juman says, I want to volunteer. My exam is tomorrow. Ooh, Juman, just in the nick of time. So yes, absolutely, are you ready? Let's try to help out Juman. Some last minute advice and cramming, I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Juman hopefully is still with us. Hopefully Juman was able to stay and hang in there for this opportunity. I don't want Juman to regret it and be like, oh, I had a chance, but I didn't see it. So, or maybe Juman was like, I gotta go and study. Oh, no, nope. Juman's like, I got you. All right, Juman, I want to give you a fair chance. So let me reach out. Hello. Hi, Juman. Hi, how are you? I am doing fantastic. How are you doing? Yeah, I am also good. All right, Juman, may I ask, where are you in this big, beautiful world of ours? Uh, I am from Bangladesh. You are in Bangladesh, and you have an exam tomorrow. Yeah. You're studying late. What time is it for you right now? Uh, it is uh, 10 a.m. 10 p.m. 10 p.m., yeah. I was like, 10 a.m., I don't know, okay. 10 p.m., yes. So, Juman, first advice? Pretty much stay in English from here on out. When is your exam tomorrow? What time in the morning? At uh, 2 p.m. At 2 p.m., okay. So you basically yeah. have like uh, f uh, 2, 12, uh, 16 hours till exam time. Um, just some general advice, and this is for everybody, okay, Juman? So listen up carefully. Um, stay in English, so try to keep your brain in English for the rest of the night. Have a good night's rest, so yeah. try to get a full eight hours of sleep. The brain works a lot better when you get a good night's sleep. When you wake up in the morning, wake up in English, do a little bit of light reading, tell the people around you to speak English to you only. Okay, don't overdo it. Like, don't do a full practice exam before your exam. That's a bad idea. You'll tire yourself out, okay? Um, so just stay in English. Go to the exam center early. Find somebody else. Talk to them in English, okay? Yeah, sure. All right. Students who listen to that advice often will write us back and they'll say, oh, I did that and it was great and I, I got a great score. So definitely do that. Okay, Juman, I'm going to ask you a question for speaking part one. Give me a nice full sentence answer, okay? Yeah, I'll try. Don't try, Juman. Just do it. You speak English. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're still talking about flowers. Okay, here we go. Uh, where would you go to buy flowers? Um, I would probably uh, buy flowers from my um, any nearest shop. Um, it's, it would be uh, easier for me to find any uh, flower. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are some um, shops which is uh, not uh, near to my hometown, so it would be 
it, it won't be very easier for me. Okay. All right. Um, so that would be about a band um, six to a band 6.5 um, response. I think your fluency is great. I think your fluency is like a band seven. You're speaking fairly smoothly. Uh, you need to improve your answer a bit and um, your word choice. Um, here's a quick question. What is a flower shop called in English? Um, <laughs> I really work at <laughs> it's a tr it is a bit tricky. Let's see if anybody else gets that in the chat. I am looking at the chat, everyone, and seeing if you're paying attention. It's a trickier piece of vocabulary. I was just curious if you know it. It's called a, it almost sounds like a flower. Anirban says it's a nursery. Uh, a nursery is, um, yeah, yeah, nursery is okay because a nursery is where they grow plants and flowers for the garden. So that would be good. Um, there we go. Jasmine florist, says, maybe. Yeah, that's it. It's a florist. A florist specializes yeah, in, yeah, in selling flowers. So uh, visualize your language, okay? So when you're thinking of a flower shop, you, you should see the outside of that flower shop with those flowers. And then at the top, it probably says florist, right? If, if you're in an English speaking country. And, uh, uh, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. like, like every time it's really important to give an uh, example in part three. Um, yeah, when when someone asks me that question, my answer is just think like 60%. So for 60% of the questions, you should be able to include a smooth example. Okay, um, I'll show you with this mm -hmm. question here. And I think this question is a perfect uh, case where you can include uh, an example. So think answer, explain example. So you said, um, I would probably buy flowers uh, from the nearest shop. How close is the nearest shop to your house? Uh, like 10 minutes work. Okay, you don't have to tell me the truth. <laughs> Just say a number, okay? So I would probably buy flowers from the nearest shop about a 10 minute walk. Yeah. Uh, from my home. Um, and you said it would be easier. Uh, what's a nicer piece of vocabulary than it would be easier? It starts with a C. O N V can the can V Nient, right? Um, because uh, it is convenient and quite cheap. So you don't have to tell me the truth. You can make it all up, okay? Especially for part one, it's fairly easy to make up answers. Just keep it simple. Think like you're in like a movie where everything's just the usual, right? So, so you can say, oh, I would probably buy flowers from the nearest shop about a 10 minute walk from my home because it's convenient and quite cheap. Um, in fact, I bought uh, some tulips uh, from there uh, for my mom last week. Okay, it's all made up. I'm making all of this up, all right? You can do the same. So don't be shy to do that in your exam, okay? Yeah, thank you. And then, and then your score will be higher. So just keep it. Think, keep thinking. Answer, explain, example. Answer, explain, example. Okay. Um, here we go. So I'm going to give you uh, this uh, answer and then repeat after me. So where would you go to buy flowers? Why? Um, I would probably buy flowers from the nearest shop, about a 10 minute walk from my home, because it's convenient and quite cheap. In fact, I bought some tulips from there for my mom last week. Where would you go to buy flowers? Um, I would probably buy flowers from the nearest shop uh, about a 10 minute walk from my home because it's convenient and quite cheap. Uh, in fact, uh, I bought some tulips from there for my mom last week. Wonderful. That would be a band nine. And based on how you said that, I think that you can get a band seven tomorrow easily. Okay, just keep thinking in this way and um, over the course of the next 16 hours, make sure eight hours is good sleep and the other eight hours, make sure you're using English and you're practicing this kind of smooth answer, explain, example type communication, okay? Yeah, I will try. I feel like uh, when uh, anyone asks me any question, I, I forget everything. 
Yeah, visualize. So see what you're talking about in your head, right? So see yourself walking down the street, going to the flower shop, the florist, and buying those tulips for your mom, right? So picture what you're talking about, okay? Yeah. Okay, All right. Thank you. Juman, good luck on your exam tomorrow. Everybody send good luck, send some positive vibes for Juman. All right. Bye, Juman. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Thank you. All right, some positive vibes for Juman. Uh, students, uh, with those positive vibes, I'm going to um, wrap up the lesson for today, but worry not. Tomorrow we have speaking part two and speaking part three coming up tomorrow. So I'll be looking for different volunteers. I did see a lot of our members volunteering in this class too. Members, you have that speaking part two, especially for you tomorrow. So uh, I, we will be doing more of this. And for everybody, definitely check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, giltshelp.com for general IELTS, where you can use this interface. You can connect with other IELTS students and uh, join our premium IELTS package um, on the website uh, for aehelp.com. It will look like this. Uh, click the uh, big red button to join. One-time payment, lifetime access, well worth it. General outs looks like that. Click that big red button. You're good to go. You're golden. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, Carolina, for moderating the chat. I saw that you had a fair bit to do there at one point. Um, and uh, yeah, nice of all of those students to be wishing good luck for uh, Juma. Um, that's fantastic. Thank you to our volunteers. Hopefully, I'll catch all of you tomorrow. Uh, and keep having a good weekend until then. Much love uh, to all of you. I am Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. And I look forward to speaking with all of you on Saturday. Bye. <laughs>